purpose of our little bonus lab is we are going to determine, we're going to find the power that our class can generate pushing a car. Okay? It's as simple as that. So in real life, you don't want to do Fred Flintstone kind of thing, right? You don't push your car along with your feet there or whatever, right? Your car engine does that. But if your car breaks down, you've got to push it yourself there, right? So that's actually a huge problem we're trying to figure out now, is right now we rely on using gasoline and fossil fuels to push our cars along. Eventually, though, we're going to run out. So trying to figure out a smarter way to do that, that's the way to go there, okay? You're supposed to do title, purpose, procedure, hypothesis, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get down to the meat of it, okay? It's all about your four-step analysis here. Let's do it. Step one, make a little picture, right? A lot of people think the picture is annoying to irritate you. It's actually not. Okay, the key to solving all these problems is just visualizing what's going on and then in step two, breaking down the knowns and unknowns. Here's a trick, okay? In every energy kind of problem, you have an initial state and a final state. That determines the energy you put into the system versus the energy you get out and then you can apply the conservation of energy, okay? So in a second, we're going to head out to the senior lot. We're going to take uh, Mary Alice's car here. We're going to put it in neutral. Of course, you'll park, you know, in a clear lane. Hopefully no, nobody's coming in late to school there. We don't want anyone to get hurt. We're going to get a bunch of people in your car to increase its mass. Then we're going to pile on our best team, okay, of athletes there to push on the car there. And uh, don't push on, like, mirrors or anything like that. We don't want to break the trim. But just, you know, push on the trunk, the door frame, and all that, okay, if you lower your windows. So whatever, you just got a bunch of people trying to push the car there, okay? And World Strongest Man Contest, what's crazy is it's usually just one guy pulling not one car, but like three cars tied together, a big bus. Uh, one year, I saw they had a contest, they had to pull like a 16-ton train on these train tracks. It's just crazy there, okay? So anyway, that's what we're going to do. So let's think about it. At the very beginning, okay, what kind of energy are we putting into the system? We are putting in, if you're using your muscles, and you're putting a force over distance, what's that called? That is called, come on guys, force over distance. Are we brain dead? Work, okay? The athletes, in this case, the students are doing work. I'm gonna put a little I for initial. We're initially adding work into the system. You see that? And then the goal is to push the car some kind of safe distance. And I think before I wanna do 100 meters, but uh, that's actually kind of dangerous. Our parking lot's not quite that big. Let's do 50 meters, okay? We're gonna pick a distance of 50 meters. That actually works out pretty darn good. That's about a safe length that we can do the uh, supercar push in the parking lot. And then the goal is, if you want to generate a lot of power, to push the car as slowly as possible or as fast as possible. As fast as possible. You see that? Okay. And in the end, where does all that work energy go to? Can you guys visualize this? It goes to energy motion is called what? Come on guys, you awake? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. That is correct. Okay. It's as simple as that. And then once, Mary Alice, we pass the finish line, then you step on the brake. Okay. But wait till you pass the finish line so everyone can let go and then break gently and firmly. Not slam it on and <laughs> everyone like slams into your uh, back windshield there. Okay? Now before we do that, we actually need to figure out what kind of data we need to collect so we're not just out there like doofuses, right? So step two is we want to list all of the what? Knowns and unknowns. But here's a trick to energy. Do it in how many columns? In two columns, okay? So we have an initial state and a final state. Got it? What's the big thing we're trying to find? The big thing we're trying to find is what? Everybody. Brain dead. Power, right? That's the goal. We're trying to find power. Okay? We're going to find it in watts and horsepower just because that's really interesting. Okay? And what's crazy is I thought most people can't generate that much power, but I've had classes run up to like 15 to 20 horsepower. It's crazy. Okay? By the way, a horsepower is not a horse scalping at full speed. It's what a horse can do over a long period of time is what James Watt measured, okay? And that's what one horsepower is. So a horse galloping at full speed is probably closer to 100 horsepower. Obviously, you're not a horse, right? So anyway, we want to find power. P is for power. Power is measured in watts, okay? To get power, we're going to, like, skip ahead to step three. We'll cheat a little bit. Power is just what? Energy over time, or in this case, work over time, right? So obviously, we need to measure time in seconds. So we'll just have a volunteer use a... Stopwatch or their smartphone to take a quick measurement for us, okay? So someone want a time for us really quick? There we go, okay? 
And Sarah, why don't you be one of the passengers in the car there? Want to do that too? You'll sit in the car. You'll get a real good time there. Okay? Perfect. Actually, normally if we do this, I, I got to get my whistle. I don't have it, so I'll just you know yell out really loud or whatever. Okay? So we need to measure time. Next, we need to measure work. How can you get work energy? Work energy is force times what? Distance, yeah? We have distance, but what's hard to measure is the force that we're pushing the car with, especially because we're piling on a bunch of people, right? So anybody know the smarter way we can determine the work done, the energy done? We can't really find work input in joules directly because we can't really measure force very well. Distance we know. Distance we're just going to pick 50 meters, okay? So the force we can't really measure very well. You see that? So there's actually a smarter little trick. We can't really find the average force in newtons of each person. I mean, we could try to, like, put bathroom scales against the car and have people push it, but that'll scratch up your nice BMW. You want to do that? And then also it's kind of hard to get a reading, so forget it. There's a smarter way. What's the smart way? Where does the initial energy go to? It all goes to what at the end? Come on, guys. goes to... Are you awake? Kinetic energy. Yeah, we can find Ke, because what's Ke? What's the equation? Real simple. One half what? M V squared. Okay, and in this case, it's the final velocity. So M, we can find, we can look up the mass of uh, Muriel's car. should be on a sticker right on her door. I'll just go online and look it up, or if you got your owner's manual, that's cool. Okay? Usually there's a sticker right on your driver's side door. It tells you the gross weight of your car, and then the proper um, tire pressure to inflate your tires. Okay? It just makes it easier for mechanics to take care of your car there. So the final thing is the velocity initial or the velocity final. Which one? Velocity final. Because at the very beginning, your initial velocity is just zero, right? So that's silly. There's no kinetic energy there. So here's what's tricky. How do we get the final velocity? Okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that if everyone's pushing as hard as they can at their maximum force, then you're going to have a constant acceleration. You're always going to be speeding up till the very end. Okay? So because of that, we can use a nifty equation to make our life easier. So in this case, um, which nifty equation worked really well if we want to know acceleration? Uh, let's see, we got da da da, acceleration. We could do VF equals VI plus AT, but then we have to find A. That's too much work. So we got uh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A. There's only one that doesn't have acceleration. Anyone know? It's nifty equation number. 2. Delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 times time. Okay? So that looks complicated, but it's actually not too bad. The final velocity we can find if we rearrange this equation. Okay? The initial velocity is just 0. So 2 times delta x divided by the time will be our final velocity. So in other words, normally speed is distance over time. But in this case, we double that because that would be your average speed. You see that? So in other words, normally, if you just time how long it takes a car to go from point A to B, and you divide by the time, you would get its average speed. But in this case, we don't want the average speed. We want the final top speed, because that's the maximum kinetic energy. So in other words, all we really need to do is measure out 50 meters and time it, and then find the mass of a car. Got it? Leave all your junk in the room. I will lock the doors. Let's go for it. Here we go. So we didn't have... Um, the exact mass, but it's a BMW 530i. We'll just say close enough. And it looks like the official curb weight is uh, 3472 pounds, okay? Except we added extra mass, didn't we? So normally it's not polite to ask a lady their weight, but uh, if you don't mind, we will. Actually, you guys okay? Can we just do it, do it in pounds? Okay, so let me get out my calculator really quick. How do we get the total mass of the car there? And by the way, more weight means less energy and more energy. What do you think? Obviously, right? It takes more energy to move more mass there, right? That's why a truck engine is so big, a bus and all that. So the car is 3472, and then the passengers, if you could just call out your weight real quick, okay? 112. Okay, we got uh, 112. What else? 130. 130. 109. Oh, you guys are too fast for me. 125. Uh, 125 and 109? Is that everybody? And 105. Thank you. Okay. So we had a total weight in pounds of 4,053 pounds, except mass is not reported in pounds. What's it reported in? Kilograms. Okay. To get kilograms, we just divide by 2.2. Okay. Actually, that's awesome. You guys were pushing like over two tons. That's awesome. Okay. But anyway, in kilograms, there's 2.2 pounds per kilogram. That's just a good one to know because when you travel any other country in the world, 
you will always report your, your mass in kilograms. So your driver's license won't say pounds, it'll say kilograms. When you buy bananas, it'll be in kilograms, etc. Okay? So just take weight in pounds, divide by 2.2 pounds per kilogram. It's about uh, 1842 kilos, okay, is what we'll go with. So the mass is 1842 kilograms, okay? Sarah timed it for us. What was the official time? 10.2 seconds. And then to make it safer, instead of doing 50 meters, because uh, then may else would have crashed, I only did 25 meters. I paced it out, okay? In the pouring rain. You guys are totally insane there, okay? So now we can get our, if our distance is um, 25 meters, okay? That's the same as our delta x, whatever, right? Doesn't really matter. 25 meters. Then we can find the final velocity, okay? Vf is going to be two times the delta x over the time of uh, 10.2, okay? So in other words, normally to get speed, you just do distance over time. But since we're accelerating, that's only your average speed. So to get the final speed, it's going to be double that. So 2 times 25 is 50 divided by 10.2. And you guys got it going a whopping 4.9 meters per second, which doesn't sound that fast, but it's actually a little bit over 10 miles an hour. That's actually very decent considering that short distance you guys were accelerating, okay? So actually, if we had gone the full 50 meters, you guys probably would have doubled that. You could have kept accelerating there. In the pouring rain. So now, what can we actually figure out? Oops, that's the uh, final velocity, right? We can now find the, what can we find? We're trying to get what? What's the big idea? We want to get power, right? Power is energy over time, work over time. The work done is equivalent to the what? Kinetic energy, right? So to find Ke, we just do one half what? The mass of uh, 1842 divided by, or sorry, times the final velocity of 4.9 squared. Okay, and it's a little kinetic energy or a crazy amount. It's a what? Crazy amount of kinetic energy, right? It's like 22,113 joules. Okay, is the Ke? 22113 uh, joules. There we go. 22113. Let me do this in a different color. There we go. 22113 joules of kinetic energy. 22,113 joules of kinetic energy. So finally, how can we get the final power? Power is just what? Power is equal to work divided by time, right? So the work energy is equivalent to the kinetic energy, 22113. So our team of super powerful physics students pushed and they generated 22,000 kilojoules of energy. That's awesome in 10.2 seconds. Okay, that's the key there. So if we take our energy and divide that by the time, work over time, energy over time, we get a power of 2,167.9. Let's just round that off. 2,168 units for power is watts. Okay, and then really quick to make that a little bit more quantifiable. We're not used to just measuring the power of a car in watts. Though I predict as electric cars take off, instead of seeing everything in horsepower, you'll start to probably see things more in watts and kilowatts, okay? That's just a more scientific way to measure it. But one horsepower is 746 watts. So all we gotta do is take 2168 and divide by 746. And you guys were generating about like 2.9 horsepower there, okay? So 2160 watts is about 2.9 horsepower, which if you think about it, is pretty much reasonable that you guys were equivalent to about three horses tugging along in that car there, okay? So I think if we had a longer runway and a little bit more time, you guys could get, get that number up big time there, okay? But in real life, you don't really try to push a car along by yourself there, but you try to size the engine to maximize the performance of the car there, yeah? So what's interesting is usually the higher horsepower you have for a car, true, it'll accelerate faster, but then it's not as energy efficient. So there's two ways to look at that, right? And that is people aren't very powerful. But on the flip side, uh, another way to look at that is what powers people? You're powered by what? Like, what's Andrew got right there? That's awesome. Your lunch bag there, right? Yeah, look at that. What a lunch bag. You're just powered by food, right? So if you think about it, the fact that you can just eat a couple sandwiches and it powers you through, well, not the whole day, right, but at least the morning, shows that relatively humans are pretty efficient there in how we process energy there, okay?